right, Karen, it's on YouTube. And Emily, we're all set. All right, thank you, Madam City Clerk. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our final Burlingame City Council meeting of 2020. What a year. Uh, the time is 7.02 p.m. It's uh, Monday, December 21st, 2020, and we'll officially call this meeting to order. Before we get started, I'm gonna turn it back over to the city clerk so that she can explain how members of the public who may not have joined us before can participate in different aspects of the meeting. So Megan, if you could go ahead and, and share that with the community, thank you. Sure, hi everyone. So I would just ask to begin with that you keep yourself on mute and that you keep your uh, camera off unless you're giving a public comment at the appropriate time. Uh, this just helps us to keep our meeting running smoothly. If you would like to comment during the meeting, there's a couple of ways. You can either email me at publiccomment at burlingame.org or you can chat me. It's one of the little features on Zoom. And then your last option is to raise your hand. And we'll have a couple areas for public comment tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. And we'll begin as we always do with item number two, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. I'd like to ask tonight the unsung hero of 2020, our fearless city manager, Lisa Goldman, to please lead us in the pledge tonight. Hopefully my internet doesn't go out on you like it was just a minute ago. If everyone can join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A little quiet there. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Thanks for joining. We're all on mute, so there we go. Right. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your incredible service this year. Uh, we'll next with our roll call, make sure all of our council members are here. Council member Colson. Here. Councilmember Brownrigg? Here. Councilmember Ortiz? Here. Vice Mayor O'Brien? Here. Mayor Beach? Here. We are all present and accounted for. Item number five, upcoming events. We have a little bit of a break coming up, at least from traditional uh, city operations. Of course, the city keeps running. Uh, but I, if, if colleagues have any particular announcements of upcoming events, Please share them now, otherwise we know that City Hall will be shut down um, for operations for a few days and I welcome any colleagues have extra announcements. Seeing none, we will move on to presentations tonight. We have two. Uh, we have a presentation from uh, Rethink Waste, a poster contest winner, and that's where we'll begin tonight. Hi, thank you. Hello, Council. Um, my name is Emmy Hashizumi, and I am the Rethink Waste Environmental Education Manager. And um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Rethink Waste, you should get to know us because Rethink Waste is um, the Joint Powers Authority that is formed by 12 local government jurisdictions, which includes Burlingame. So as a, your Joint Powers Authority, we oversee the waste collection, uh, processing, and education and outreach uh, related to waste reduction on behalf of your city. And one of the best education initi initiatives that we have is our annual poster contest, which um, invites all of our elementary school students to submit um, their artwork related to a theme that um, we choose. So this year was how people are celebrating uh, waste reduction outdoors. Uh, we had a lot of great submissions as usual, and it's really hard to choose our winners, but uh, we had the honor of um, choosing one of your students from Burlingame as our first place winner. So uh, council member Brownrigg is going to introduce them. Uh, thank you, Emmy, and thanks to everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure and honor to introduce Ellen Knight to the council and to the city. Uh, she did a great job, and in a minute, I'm gonna ask don't know whether we can share screen so we can put, can we pop her poster up? Um, I'm, I may be able, or can you do that, Emmy? Do you have the ability to share a screen or is it only? Yeah, me? give me a minute. Um, I saw, I okay. well, well, <clears throat> oh, thank you, Steve <laughs> Clerk. Somebody will to... sort that out. Anyway, you know, um, 
at the end of the day, a lot of what we do on city council is not for us. Uh, it's for the next generation. And certainly when it comes to the environment, it's absolutely about the next generation. And which one of us has not been corrected about which material ought to go into which bin, thanks to our kids listening at school to rethink waste, teaching people how to recycle and where to put things. So without further ado, but with a great deal of uh, vicarious pride, I'd like to introduce Ellen Knight to the group. And um, hopefully we can pop your poster up, Ella, so everyone can see it. But the floor is yours to tell us a little bit about what inspired you and, and why this is important. Thank you. And I think that the environment is very important. I want the earth to be healthy and mother earth to be okay. And I feel like that starts with the four R's doing all the things on the poster. That's where it starts. And that's why I made this poster to showcase all of the four R's, put them into action in the illustrations. And that's why the earth is important to me. But there's nobody talking now. Yep. All right, if we can and, exit this. And Ella, are your, are your parents with us this evening? I can't see. If they'd like to say anything, they, they should feel free to do so. Are they with? Are they? Well, yes, yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Recology, for the opportunity. It was actually a, a, a great uh, project. Um, Ella's been part of the green team at her school, and, she, and, it's, and even at home, she always has us doing the right thing and putting things in the right places. Um, so we learned quite a bit from them. This is our future. This is our next generation here. And thank you to the city um, um, and the, the council members uh, for the honor. So it's been, it's been very nice. Thank you, guys. Well, keep up the good work, Ella. Uh, and back to you, Madam Mayor. All right, what a fantastic presentation. Thank you, Councilmember Brownrigg to, for bringing that to us. And thank you, Ms. Ella Knight for just a great, great job on that poster. Congratulations to all. Um, any other colleagues wish to, wish to say anything? Um, I know we all offer our heartfelt congratulations and thanks for sharing your beautiful art and your, your spirit of protecting Mother Earth. Excellent. All right, well, with that, we've got another presentation tonight. Okay, Ella, so thank you so much. And this time we have a presentation from our chief of police. Um, and I wanna give our city manager an opportunity if she wants to say anything before we begin, or we can turn it directly over to uh, Chief Mike Matucci. Um, I'll just preface this with saying, um, we thought this would be a good opportunity because we have a relatively large uh, viewing audience today for the chief to do a little bit of follow-up um, from the work that we did over the summer with our town hall and listening session um, regarding use of force and community policing and all of that. And so he has just a brief presentation uh, for some updates for the community and some work that they're gonna be doing going forward. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chief Matucci. Thank you. We have a PowerPoint? No, perfect. All right, so um, mayor and council members, uh, thank you for allowing me some time tonight to update everyone on a few things we've been working on at the police department. Um, after the tra tragic death of George Floyd back in May of this year, it led police departments across the country to take a closer look um, at their relationship with their communities, as well as uh, their policies and procedures, in particular use of force policies. Uh, so I wanted to follow up on that, as well as the town hall and listening session that the city of Burlingham hosted uh, back on July 23rd. So next slide, please. So there were three priority areas I wanted to address this year that I felt were important for Burlingame. Um, one was our use of force policy. Uh, one was bias based policing or more commonly known as racial profiling. And the third was police response to persons in crisis, persons dealing with mental health issues. Uh, next slide. Uh, so I'll start with the use with our use of force policy. So after the death of George Floyd, we made some immediate changes to our policy. Um, we banned the use of carotid holds, choke holds, and strangle holds. Um, we added de-escalation language to our policy, and our officers are trained in de-escalation and de-escalation techniques um, and practice them routinely in the field. But that specific language was missing uh, from our policy, though, so it was added. Um, we also addressed the eight can't wait campaign suggestions that so many people mentioned uh, in their messages to me and to the council. Uh, we have seven of those eight suggestions in place. Uh, the eighth suggestion uh, is a very 
uh, debatable and is looked upon by most professionals to be outdated and impractical. So we do have seven out of those, those eight in place. Um, then on June 15th, the mayor and city council voted unanimously to take uh, former President Barack Obama's um, reimagining police pledge, uh, policing pledge. And in summary, uh, that pledge called for a review of our use of force policies uh, to engage our community for input, uh, to report our findings, and to reform our police use of force policies as necessary. So as part of that, and as I mentioned earlier, on July 23rd, the city hosted, in my opinion, a very informative and useful town hall and listening session where we discussed topics such as police use of force, hiring practices, community relations, uh, et cetera. And so after that initial review and the input we received, I'm happy at this point with, uh, with where we're at with our use of force policy and our review of a use of force incidents. Um, and our current policy is available for anyone to look at um, on our police department webpage. Uh, next slide, please. So I also wanted to address bias-based policing or racial profiling. So when an officer is accused of pulling someone over or stopping someone based on race, it's difficult to prove, to prove that one way or another. Um, you know, we can look at body-worn camera footage and see that the officer may have treated the person nicely, may have treated them with respect, and may not have violated any of their rights, but it really it, it doesn't really show whether there was racial profiling involved. So, so for reasons such as these, California passed the Racial and Identity Profiling Act, or RIPA, um, in 2016. And that requires police agencies to collect and report stop data uh, to the Department of Justice. So stop meaning any self-initiated self -initiated traffic stop, bike stop, or pedestrian stop. Um, so you may ask, you know, don't we have information on who we stop? And the answer is you know, not always, or it may not always be easy to pull from our records. Um, the info we get from a stop depends on what we do during a stop. So if it's just a quick warning stop, we may not have much at all. Um, if we run a system check on the person while we have them stopped, that'll give us a little more information. And if we issue a citation or make an arrest, we would obviously, it would obviously give us more. Uh, but again, we don't always obtain all that information and it doesn't go into a bank where we can, where we can get it easily. Um, so without a system in place to collect and store this data, if we wanted to know, for example, you know, the racial makeup of people a certain officer was stopping or the entire department, we would have to research each stop individually. And that could be hundreds or thousands of stops a year. And, it, and again, the stop may not even include the data we're looking for. So RIPA mandates that we collect this data uh, so it can be reviewed and reported. Um, so what data are we talking about? Uh, next slide, please. So this is, uh, this is what each officer is gonna be required to obtain and enter after each stop, regardless of the outcome. So it's the date and time and duration of the stop, the location, the reason for the stop, actions taken by the officer, the results, all suspect information, the perceived race and ethnicity, the perceived gender, perceived to be LGBT, perceived age, um, the degree of English fluency, perceived or known disability, um, the, the identification of the officer, years of experience, and the type of assignment. So as you can see, you know, we will be able to run helpful data for the entire department or a single officer or even a certain shift to see who we're stopping. Next slide, please. So one thing I wanna point out, um, the effective date of this law is different depending on the size of the agency. So at Burlingame Police Department with 40 sworn officers, we're actually not required to start gathering this data until 2022 and not reported until 2023. But we felt that it was important enough that we're gonna start a year earlier than required. Um, we actually held beta test um, data collection software this past year and did a pilot program at the PD. And because of that, we're actually set to go live on January 1st, a year earlier than is required. Um, and I think because of the effort involved in implementing this, I'm not sure many other agencies are going live with this any earlier than required. Um, so I do wanna thank uh, Captain Bob Bull and Sergeant Dave Perna for their work on this. Uh, they managed this project and got us ready to go in January. Next slide, please. And then the third, the third, um, the third thing I wanted to, uh, item listed was to take a closer look at a response to persons in crisis or persons suffering from mental health issues because of the propensity for those calls to turn violent. Um, I think our officers do a really good job handling uh, these types of calls. And uh, so I'd like to touch on a few things we do and are planning on doing in the future to help in this area. Um, all officers receive crisis, crisis intervention training during their time in the academy. But then we also send everyone to an additional training um, through the county soon after they complete their field training. And then officers also receive constant refresher training in this area throughout their career when they you know, do tactical communication training and force officers training. 
Um, we also utilize the San Mateo County Mental Health Assessment and Referral Team, or SMART, on a majority of our calls for service involving persons in crisis. Uh, this is an ambulance staffed with paramedics specifically trained to deal with persons in crisis. So this is a step towards getting away from the traditional, the traditional law enforcement response to these types of calls. Um, our community response team, or CRT, also attends monthly countywide behavioral health meetings where they can request the county mental health follow up with persons uh, of concern we may be dealing with in Burlingame. Um, with that in mind, uh, there are four agencies in the county right now who are currently involved in a pilot program with county behavioral health where uh, they're splitting the cost of licensed county health uh, clinicians to work full time directly out of their police departments. Um, the clinicians will be able to respond to, to calls with the officers um, and do follow up with the individuals that they contact. Um, so I'm keeping a close eye on this pilot program and if it's successful, and becomes available to other police departments, uh, I would like to consider doing that here in Burlingame. It's just not available to us at this point. Um, we also currently partner with the nonprofits Life Moves and Star Vista for homeless outreach, um, as many of our homeless also struggle with mental health issues. And so um, uh, that concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions or hear any comments. Thank you so much, Chief Matucci, for a great presentation and overview of the important work that's been going on behind the scenes. Um, since July, so thank you. Colleagues, do we have any, any questions before we open it up to public comment on this, on this item? Um, Council Member Colson, go ahead. Um, yes, yeah, so one, the one question I have is around, okay, there we go. Um, the one question I have is around data. So how does an officer perceive someone's gender or racial makeup? I mean, if you're multiracial, half Japanese, half, you know, Hispanic and whatever, I mean, I find that to be a very awkward situation for, for the police officer. And I just don't know how they would do it. How do they do it? So again, and they're not, we're not gonna collect the data on, on who we actually pull over. It's the perceived you know, race or gender that the officer perceives at the time, because that's technically what they're, you know, that's who they think they're pulling over. So, um, and there's a, there's a spot for unknown because a lot of times at night, you know, if, if the windows are tinted and you pull somebody over, you have no idea. So at that point you could put unknown, but you know, somebody might think they're pulling over a, Cauc a Caucasian person. They get to the, the window and it turns out to be Hispanic, but they would put Caucasian because that's who they thought it was. So that's just what DOJ is requiring because again, it's not who you actually pull over, it's who you think you're pulling over. And that's the kind of the data they want. Uh, but they said they do they do leave an unknown uh, box there. So, okay, that thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for the question, Councilmember Colson. Councilmember Brownry, go ahead. My question, Chief, is how can I clone your attitude and your department's attitude and spread it across this country? Because I appreciate you stepping up a year early. I appreciate that. The Burlingame Police Department adopted body-worn cameras before other people said we had to or it was best practice. You have consistently leaned in to being the, the best possible partner for the community, and that includes our visitors. And I just want to say thank you. I remain concerned about policing across this country. This is not the time and place to talk about it. Uh, but I um, am deeply proud to be part of your team and to watch what you're doing um, and, and the kind of attitude of partnership that you instill in the men and women in Burlingame Police. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Brownrigg. Vice Mayor O'Brien. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chief Matucci, for your um, presentation. I just worry a little bit that I think when you do publish the data, that there needs to be an asterisk stating that this is perceived and it's before you actually see the person. So you, there are a lot of assumptions in this information. So, you know, the data to me then is, I mean, pretty presumptuous. So how do you make conclusions when it's that presumptuous? You know, you know what yeah, I'm I saying? Can't, not gonna be when you're trying to pull someone over, you might get a glance, correct? But, you know, you may, I mean, to have here perceived to be LGBT, I mean, you're not gonna know that. Uh, perceived age is going to be quite difficult when you haven't, you know, actually talked to the person. So I, I just kind of wonder really how accurate this data is going to be. 
Well, I'm, I'm not sure that, I mean, they're looking for accuracy as far as who we're pulling over. I think they're looking for who we, I guess, we think we're pulling over. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't, I can't speak on behalf of DOJ's motive motivation and, and what they're going to do with the data. I know what I want to, I know what I want to do with the data. And I think it's helpful information to have um, to see, you know, who our officers perceive they're pulling over. Um, but yes, you're right. It's, it's, it's just, it's perceived it's who they perceive. And I know I can remember from when I was a patrol officer and pulling people over, you know, maybe 50 to 75% of the time, I had no idea who, who was in the car, you know, when I was pulling over, I was coming up from behind. It was, I worked night shift all the time. It was always dark. So um, I think there's going to be a lot of unknowns and I think that's okay. Um, and that's just why we're starting a year earlier because we don't technically have to, you know, to report this to the DOJ that first year, even though we will, but we can look and see, you know, um, where the bugs are and, and, and we can look at the data ourselves and see, see what it says of a year before we actually have to, to use it. So um, it'll be interesting to see um, what happens. Okay. So I do think it's just important to really emphasize that when, you know, we eventually get the data and you report out. Because to me, when you're, when you're working on perception, the data will not be accurate. And you don't want policy to be made on information that's potentially inaccurate. It's all perception. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor O'Brien. Councilmember Ortiz. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and Chief, I just want to just make a comment. I've had to witness a couple incidents in front of the, my place of work in, in the plaza. And I got to say, your officers have done a great job de-escalating and uh, making a situation that could have gone easily gone sideways. And they've handled it beautifully. So just uh, kudos to your troops. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to open, if colleagues don't have any further questions, I'm going to open up this presentation to public comment in case there's any members of the public who wish to speak on this or, or ask a question. And everybody will have uh, two minutes if, if you would like to uh, contribute to this conversation or make a comment. And you can do so by either using the raise hand feature in your participant window if you're calling in you can dial star nine on your telephone and that will indicate to me that you've raised your hand um, or you can message our city clerk via Zoom as well. I'm scrolling. I, Do you have Ray Larios? Has I don't know if that is a hand up or, an, or another uh, feature. It's but like we'll, Jean Alston and Ray Larios both have their hands up. Thank you very much. Um, let's go ahead. I think Ray may have, Ray, did you have a comment, Mr. Larios, or did you? Um... Hi, everybody. I was actually a applause for the uh, young girl who um, um, did the presentation of the environment. However, I do have a more Mr. Larios, I'm so sorry. Your, con your connection, we, we can barely hear you um, with your internet connection, but I think, what, I don't mean to interrupt you, but we really can't, can, can anybody else hear his comments? No, I, if he wants, he can always send me a chat and I can read it out for him because it doesn't sound like we're able to pick up what he's saying. Right, I think what I heard was applause for uh, Chief Matucci and his work on this and then I lost him, but uh, we appreciate the gesture and the little applause emoji there we saw in the chat as well. But if you'd like to continue, yes, please message the city clerk or, or you can even write public comment um, at burlingame.org. Um, we'll move on to Mr. Alston. Um, thank you, Mr. Alston. And you can unmute yourself and you've got two minutes. Great, thank you. Um, I just want to say thanks to uh, Chief Matucci for moving really quickly and and um, just kind of leading the charge. So uh, much appreciated on just how you've dealt and responded. I'm curious about just, just in terms of how the rank and file um, police officers are reacting to this and you know, just uh, what, how you're rolling this out um, with the team. Yes, yeah, so well, thank you for that. Um, so it, it, is, it is a law. So you know, they, they understand that and they understand that, that they have to do it. Um, it, it's, it's a little tedious because there's, you know, there's so many questions they have to answer on every stop they make. Um, so, 
you know, I, I think initially um, um, they were a little worried that, you know, it's just a little more work and again, a little tedious after every stop, but, um, but they helped beta test it and they helped with the pilot program and we're using a vendor and a, and a, a system that, that is, you know, pretty, pretty simple and easy and quick. And so after they used it for, you know, a couple of weeks, they realized it's not, it's not, um, you know, as bad as it seems and, you know, you get used to it and you can do it really quickly. And so I haven't heard, you know, anything negative. And I think that, you know, I think they appreciate the fact that, that we are getting started early so that, you know, we can work out any bugs if need be. And that we did test some different systems and found something that was, was easy for them to use um, and not, not real cumbersome. And so, um, you know, at, I think they're just getting ready to start and excited to start with it and you know, excited to see actually what, what comes of it and what the stats look like. Thanks, Chief. And thanks, Mr. Alston, for your comment and question. I see that Mr. Um, Larios has his hand up again. If you'd like to um, try to see if, if we can use the remainder of your time to make a comment, and if not, we'll, we'll see if the city clerk has your comment in writing. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is Ray Larios. I apologize, my connection's uh, not uh, doing very well this evening. But anyways, I want to commend uh, Chief Matucci on his work for election and in, uh, integrity and security this past cycle. Um, he, I commend him. He always made himself available to any questions. I also saw lots of stuff on social media from Burling MPD um, with lots of resources. So I just wanted to leave that quick comment there as a commendation to the chief. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laris. We appreciate it. Do any other members of the public wish to speak on this item? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I'll ask the city clerk if we have any other written comments on this item. We do not. All right, we will- um, oh, One more hand up. Oh, thank you. We have uh, Ms. Amy Sukumar and you've got two minutes. Go ahead and you can unmute yourself. Hi there. I just wanna thank the city and the, um, the police chief for conducting this reform, especially so in such a timely manner this year. Um, I really support it and um, hope that we'll continue to um, look at our policies and um, and continue to look at, like, I think there's been some mention about um, the collection of the data of those that we're stopping. Um, if we can just continue to revisit that, um, that would be great. And um, I, I do really appreciate your efforts and um, this is really great to learn about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right. Seeing no other hands up on this item, we'll turn it back to colleagues for any closing comments. Don't see any hands up, so I will just, oh, Council Member Colson, go yeah, ahead. Thank you. Um, I just, I just wanna say that um, I had the wonderful opportunity to spend some time this um, fall, just a few weeks ago actually, with um, some of our training officers. And uh, there were eight of them, and me, we had two hours together. I was invited into their training. And I just wanna comment that their uh, professionalism, their devotion to um, the members of the public in Burlingame and providing um, you know, outstanding training and uh, an excellent um, uh, senior staff that were working with our more junior officers and the feedback that I saw and the openness to um, grow and change and learn and change the way they approached law enforcement was really commendable. So it's just not often that we as the public get to go in and see the behind the scenes, how really difficult and hard these jobs are, Chief. And um, I sincerely appreciate that opportunity and I hope we can figure out a way in the next year to invite more of our public in to see the excellent training that you do and the work that you do and how um, devoted our officers are to making sure that we are uh, a fair and unbiased and, um, and very uh, community supporting police department. So thanks again for that opportunity. You're welcome. And you're talking about the, the force officers training and that's the, um, the simulator where officers go through different scenarios um, and they need to deescalate or decide which if, you know, use of force is necessary. And yes, you know, once COVID clears up, if, I would love to do, um, you know, a, a town hall where, you know, we, we bring that simulator and have, you know, people from the public go through it and see people do it because it is, it, it is a, a very good training and it's definitely eye-opening for the public to see 
um, you know, the different situations and how, how we train people to handle them. Thanks, Chief. And thanks for your comments, Councilmember Colson. And I know that you've talked about Citizens Academies in the past that the cities had opened up and there might be opportunities down the line as well for that, just to continue um, community-focused policing and exposure to what, um, what happens in the department. Vice Mayor O'Brien, go ahead. Uh, yes, actually, I just want to echo uh, the comments um, Council Member Colson brought up. I actually had that opportunity also uh, to be at the police department a few weeks ago and commend your colleagues, uh, Chief Matucci. And um, I have talked to the chief and his colleagues in regards to potentially doing a town hall and having a simulation like that for the public to see. So they can really see the various scenarios um, that are, you know, police are involved with and, and how they make those decisions and really understand that process and understand even the timing that goes in with those decisions on how quick those decisions are. Um, so I, I do appreciate uh, Chief uh, letting me and my colleagues, ha colleagues have the opportunity uh, to be able to participate in that simulation. So I really look forward to working uh, with you and your crew and developing something um, in the next few months so that the public can really see uh, what you all do. And uh, we are quite fortunate uh, to have such a wonderful police department. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Vice, thanks, Vice Mayor O'Brien. Well, with that, I'll just close by saying again, uh, Chief, we're, we're so lucky to have your leadership. Uh, we're lucky to have a small department that you have personally hired, um, you know, but it, does, it doesn't mean we can't continue to get better. So we're just so proud of the way that you and your team have have tackled these issues and, and embraced continuous improvement. I hear loud and clear some of the colleagues' concerns about, you know, what, what kind of data some of this bias, um, you know, logging will, will actually yield. I think what comforts me is that it's a pilot program, we're trying something new, and that we're actually, we're trying to measure perception. And I think that's really what what this is attempting to measure is perception, not necessarily accurate. It's it's who does the police officer think they're pulling over? And that's what we're measuring in case fill in the blank. We have way more of this type of person compared to that type of person. And I think that's really, really useful data as we, we go forward. And hopefully it's even across the board, but if it's not, we can, we, you, you can't fix what you can't measure. So I think it's just great that we're, we're doing this. So thank you so much, Chief. All right, and thank you to our city manager as well. From that, we will move on to um, from our presentations. And this is the point on the agenda where we can do public, where we invite members of the public to make comments on non-agenda items. So you can speak at this time about anything that is not currently on the agenda tonight due to the Ralph M. Brown Act, which governs our open meeting law. We can't comment and we can't deliberate and we can't take action on anything that's not on our agenda. But this is your opportunity to have two minutes to say whatever you would like to to the city council and we can consider it for a future agenda. Is there anybody who would like to speak on uh, this item, Madam City Clerk? I do have two emails. Um, so I guess I'll read that and see if anyone else wants to raise their hand in the meantime. So the first one is from uh, Sandra Lang. She says, Dear Mayor Beach and Council, I want to extend appreciation to our mayor and council for being responsive and accessible to the many individual and general questions that arose in this last year. Not an easy task under ordinary circumstances, yet our mayor patiently kept us updated along with the council who di diligently addressed routine city business in the midst of this pandemic. Thank you, Mayor Beach, for steady stewardship this past year. And then our second one I got was from uh, Jennifer Pfaff, and she says, Dear Mayor Beach, city council members, and city staff, thank you for the incredible leadership and service you have all provided to the Burlingame community over the past year. To say that March 13th onward has been challenging would be a huge understatement. The city has led and been managed in a way that I don't think anyone will forget. Amazingly, each city department has managed to go about its daily workload and various obligations without a hitch, at least not much of one. Finally, a special thanks to Parks and Rec, Margaret Bob, as well as the library, Brad and crew, who together with their respective staff members and community volunteers have so creatively worked on entertainment made available to all our residents. I certainly appreciate the amount of work and planning involved in pulling events during normal times, 
much less those where technology can impede yet also present new opportunities for expression. Who knew that virtual entertainment could be so engaging? Though 2020 cannot be seen in the rear view mirror quickly enough, I know that this year and the next several months will be a true inspiration to people in the future. I think this period of time will be viewed as a testament to how very creative and generous Burlingame was in a period of uncertainty and anguish for many. Bravo to all. I'm so proud to be a member of this community. So we got two very nice public comments to end the year with. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else would like to speak at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, then we will close at this time public comment for non-agenda items and thank um, Ms. Lang and Ms. Pfaff for those for those very generous comments. We appreciate them very much. Moving on now to item eight, approval of the consent calendar. We have four items uh, on that consent calendar and we usually approve them in a single motion unless a member of the council or a member of the public wishes to pull them for separate discussion. So colleagues, would anybody like to pull a um, item on the consent calendar? I don't see any hands raised, so I'll open it up to members of the public to see if anybody wishes to pull a consent calendar item for discussion. I have received no email or Zoom chat. Okay, seeing no hands raised, Motion we will- approved, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Brownrigg. Do we have a second? Second. All right, I think I heard Council Member Ortiz. So we have a motion by Council Member Brownrigg, second by Council Member Ortiz. Items 8A, B, C, and D will take a roll call vote. Council Member Colson? Yes. Council Member Brownrigg? Yes. Council Member Ortiz? Yes. Vice Mayor O'Brien? Yes. Mayor Beach? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. We just have a few more items on our stand, standard agenda that should go pretty quickly and then we'll move into the ceremonial portion of our meeting. Uh, we don't have any public hearings. Uh, item 10, we don't have any staff reports and communications. Um, do we have public comments on either of these? I see it in parentheses. I don't think we have any public comments. No. Madam City Clerk says no. Item 11, Council Committee and Activities Reports and Announcements. Uh, if colleagues would like to report anything verbally, if not, we can roll them up in future reports. Seeing no hands raised, we'll move on to future agenda items. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to acknowledgements. We thank, uh, we thank uh, staff for providing all the different minutes and such from the different commission meetings and all the commission's hard work over the past year on behalf of our city. Uh, any other acknowledgements from colleagues? Seeing none, we will now move into the ceremonial portion of our evening uh, where we begin to transition uh, the leadership roles as we rotate through for our city council. Um, the first thing uh, we'll do tonight is I just want to go ahead and introduce some folks who are here who have uh, joined us this evening and we're so grateful for our support from elected colleagues and representatives throughout the, uh, throughout the county. We have former mayor and council member Marie Schwang from the city of Hills, from the town of Hillsboro, our next door neighbor. We're so grateful you're here tonight. Thank you for joining us. We also have former council member John Root from Burlingame City Council and we thank you so much for joining us. We also have the San Carlos, I believe, we, we have the San Carlos mayor, uh, Laura Palmer Lohan with us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. And we have the mayor of San Bruno, Rico Medina tonight joining us as well. And we're very grateful for your presence and support. I noticed we also have Ms. Alexander Carter from the office of their Congresswoman Jackie Spear representing tonight as well. And we thank so many commissioners uh, on our various city commissions for joining us tonight and for your incredible hard work on behalf of the city of Burlingame. Colleagues, have I missed any elected officials that are with us in the audience tonight? I wanna make sure I'll do a final pass. If not, uh, we thank them for their presence. It means a lot to all of us. Um, before uh, I 
begin with a few remarks as your outgoing mayor. I wanted to open it up. I think we agreed to do, if there's a public comment tonight, anybody who wishes to speak on this item, this would be a great time. If not, uh, that's okay too. We'll move right on. I think we've already covered public comment earlier. Give folks a last chance. I see Mr. Launder has raised his hand. Thank you so much for joining us and you've got the floor for two minutes. All right, thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, as you said at the beginning, what a year this has been. Um, and I just wanna thank everybody involved uh, for, for making this as good a year as possibly could be. Um, I, I don't wanna talk too long to, uh, so everybody can go out and enjoy their cake and refreshments, um, which uh, is usually one of the highlights of the meeting, but um, I guess this year we'll have to do it remotely. Um, I do want to thank city staff under the leadership of uh, city manager Goldman and all the city uh, uh, department heads who are, are here tonight, uh, number one. Number two, of course, the city council um, guided by the uh, leadership of, of Mayor Beach. I appreciate uh, everything you've done. And a lot of people don't realize that um, this is basically a volunteer job. And if you figure out how many hours are spent, you probably make less than a dollar an hour um, for all your efforts. And the efforts extend far beyond the city of Burlingame. Um, all of you, I know, serve on various committees and elected boards um, throughout the county and the region. So I wanna thank you all for that. Um, and, and finally, the last group I would like to thank is the dedication of the council's family because without that and without their understanding, uh, it would be increasingly difficult for anybody to serve in such a capacity. So I wanna thank you and families. I noticed there's a few family members present. So thank you very much for, for that, that support. And um, last, lastly, I wanna wish the, the new mayor, Mayor O'Brien, the best of luck. I know um, you've had some difficult years in the past when you were mayor and hopefully 2021 will will be a, a much better year than the past year so thank you all for for all your effort and I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak thank you thank, thank you so much mr launder for the kind words on behalf of all of us we appreciate it and we appreciate your many many years of service to the city of Burlingame as a commissioner and on a million different committees we're, we're grateful to you thank you mayor I see um, one of our library board of trustees, Mr. Mike Nagler had his hand up. Please go ahead, Mike, you have two minutes, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I just wanted to say that for the last few months, we've been so focused on national politics, on national elections, that we tend to overlook what our local leaders are doing, what you're all doing, what the city council's doing, what the commissioners are doing, what the managers are doing. and Obviously, we all know it's a cliche right now that this past year has been unlike any other, but you've all been operating without a net, so to speak. Uh, there's been no instruction manual for this past year. There's no bit, been no operating instructions. And I think all of you have done an exemplary job. And I think it's been particularly difficult, you know, to be the mayor. I think Emily's column today pointed out what the city's been up to. And it was a terrific column, but I just wanted to say something else that we've lived these last few months in isolation, you know, behind our masks, too many Zoom meetings, uh, locked away in our little caves in isolation and quarantined. And sometimes when things are difficult, uh, the hardest thing to do is to simply show up that it's easy to show up for a loved one or a friend or a city when things are going well. But speaking as a library trustee, Emily has been there at our meetings. Uh, I was in an equity committee uh, presentation last week, she was there. And just showing up and letting people know in their isolation that the city government is there for them, that what we're all doing matters, 
and that we're not alone in times like these, I think something like that can't be overstated. And I just wanted to say how much I appreciate it, how much the other trustees have appreciated. And it's, uh, you've all done a terrific job. And thank you a lot, everybody. It's been great. Me Thanks. too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Mike. Thanks for your kind words. All of us appreciate it very much. I see um, Mayor Palmer Lohan is here from the from the city of Good Living, San Carlos. Please go ahead, Laura. Hi, thank you, Mayor Beach. I appreciate that. And uh, to your point, what makes the San Carlos the city of Good Living is when we have fantastic neighbors like we do in Burlingame. And it's uh, in large part due to your leadership. And uh, to echo the many comments made here uh, that preceded mine, um, you know, this pandemic has been a huge challenge, but with the, um, you know, the commitment and the collaboration of Mayor Beach and Council Member Brownrigg and Colson and O'Brien and um, uh, Ortiz, uh, it's been made much better because uh, this is really, you know, a, a global issue, but we're, we're collaborating extraordinarily well. Um, so I wanted to congratulate you, Mayor Beach, on an extraordinary year and your steadfast and uh, calm leadership um, has served, I know, your community well and has also been um, uh, inspiring uh, to see you from afar and, and know that you're uh, leading the charge in many important areas. Um, congratulations, Vice Mayor O'Brien Keegren, on, on your leadership this year and enjoy the role as mayor and um, look forward to working with you in that capacity. Um, uh, Council Member Brownrigg, um, enjoy your uh, leadership. We've had some good meetings with uh, Rethink Recology and always a great, clear voice, understanding the big picture. Um, Council Member Colson, we've worked in many circles uh, together and um, on Peninsula Clean Energy and accomplished a lot of great work uh, this year. And I know your community benefits from your uh, commitment to them and, and um, making the community much stronger. And my only regret is Council Member Ortiz, we haven't had a chance to work closely together, but I'm hoping in the coming year that we do. And if there's anything I can do to support uh, you and your community, I'm, I'm happy to be of help. So um, I wish you all in your uh, community members a safe and healthy holiday and uh, 2021 is going to be a much better year I can uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on that <laughs> so thank you so much for for the time and uh, the opportunity to speak to you all this evening thank you Mayor Palmer Lohan we appreciate it good luck in San Carlos this year San Carlos is in good hands I see uh, another hand up from uh, from Miss Amy Suthmar again thank you so much for joining us tonight Hi, Mayor. I just really wanted to uh, thank you for your service, particularly this past, this past year. Um, just as a resident of Burlingame, um, I think I first came to interact with you over some local traffic issues around our school, the Hoover Elementary School, and that may have been a couple years back. But um, I've been so grateful and impressed um, with your thoughtfulness and just your willingness to really listen to the community and respond in a collaborative manner with um, other groups, other special interest groups, and just really try to find a way forward. Um, and then just recently getting to know you um, through the United Against Hate Committee, um, which also was a response to um, what we saw with George Floyd. Um, and just getting to know you and seeing your leadership there was really, really meaningful. And um, it was really important to our family. So I want to thank you. and. Um, I want to thank the library staff as well. And also just hearing a lot about the, re the reform um, that you've been leading with, along with the police chief. Um, I really am grateful for that. And um, I, I, I just want to thank you for a special year. I really also want to thank the rest of the city council members, but in particular because of the rotation, I, I just wanted to recognize you and, and um, thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks for your kind words. Really appreciate that. Any other members of the public wish to speak before we close public comment? And we thank all of you for joining us tonight. Uh, all of you are honored guests tonight and, and valued members of our community. And it means a lot that you're with us. All yeah, right. I did uh, just use an email as well. Oh, sure. Um, so it's from Jenny Kelleher and she says, the DBID board would like to thank outgoing mayor Emily Beach for her tireless leadership during this unique time in history, a worldwide pandemic. She and her fellow council members faced and continue to face every changing situations which affect ever changing situations with which affect the entire Burlingame community. 
We look forward to working under the leadership of the new mayor, Ann Keegren, as we continue our work toward together to thrive in these challenging times. Thank you again, Mayor Beach, for all your hard work. And Alexandra Carter also would like a moment to, um, to say hello. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to send um, greetings and gratitude from Congresswoman Spear. She wasn't able to be here this evening, um, but many thanks to you, Mayor Beach, and congratulations, um, Council Member O'Brien Keegren. Um, look forward to working with you, and I'm so appreciative to the City of Burlingame for your excellent communication. I feel like there's always an open line. Um, you know, all their questions are always answered, and I feel really grateful, especially during this time, to have had that open communication. So thank you so much for keeping me abreast of all the goings on in Burlingame. Um, it's been nice to see how much you've been able to accomplish even amid a pandemic and all of the difficult things that our country is experiencing right now. So thank you so much and best of luck and congratulations. Thank you very much for your kind words, Ms. Carter. We appreciate it and for being present tonight. Mayor we also have also Joe LaMariano would like an opportunity. Sure, uh, Madam City Clerk, did you, did you have someone else before Mr. LaMariano? No, say Joe LaMariano too, so we're okay. good. Great. He's double chatting us. <laughs> Hello, folks, and, and welcome. Uh, it's always such a fun night when we see the leadership uh, uh, smoothly and safely change hands. That's what democracy is all about, right? Um, I would like to thank uh, Mayor Emily Beach for her wonderful service uh, to the city at large, and particularly this year. I uh, don't want to be super redundant, uh, but uh, this was the most challenging of years. I think I had a very cool Burlingame moment when Mayor Beach rode by my house uh, a couple of weeks ago as I was unloading groceries and said, hey, Joe. And I turned around and just kind of missed her. But my wife said that she went by and I texted her after and afterwards. And sure enough, that was Emily. Uh, it, it's that kind of town. It's uh, that's that's how we uh, that's how we roll. So I thank you for everything. I certainly want to acknowledge um, uh, 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 Deputy Mayor uh, Ann O'Brien. Uh, there aren't many of us that uh, that choose to be in, in the world that we're in here with uh, uh, the uh, public service, uh, do it both as an elected official and as a day job. So, uh, Anne, you're amazing. And I certainly want to thank our other uh, uh, wonderful council members. And in particular, I'd like to call out um, uh, our board member for Rethink Waste, Michael Brownrigg, for incredible service, contributions. He's always got uh, an, an intellectual and, and and uh, keen observations uh, and approach to our board. And I certainly want to recognize uh, city manager, Lisa Goldman uh, for her leadership. Thank you so much, Lisa. And also Carol Augustine serves as our uh, TAC member, our technical advisory committee for Rethink Waste. And everybody just puts in so much time. It's just a great time to acknowledge all of that. But thank you, Emily, and thank you, Anne. And we'll keep it on that. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Joe. Thanks so much for your comments. You bet. I see another hand up, Mr. Ray Larios. Go, go ahead. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Mayor Beach. I uh, just, uh, I won't take too much time, but I just want to thank you in particular uh, for your leadership. Um, I moved to Burlingame just recently, but I often say that Burlingame is my hometown. And it's because your leadership, under your leadership, that's what Burlingame feels like to me, like my hometown. Um, of course, I'd like to thank all of the other council members. And I wish, uh, uh, Council Member Keegren, uh, all the best of luck uh, in her new role as mayor the next year. Um, but yes, you all are amazing. Um, you all uh, make this city great. Um, and it's it's clear to me that you all have the uh, well-being and, and uh, just the, the community in mind. And so I thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Larios. Boy, we really appreciate it. Uh, we, we, we love doing this work, all of us do. Um, we love the city, we love the people, and it, and it means a lot to, um, to hear all the kind words and for you to join us tonight. So thank you all. With that, Madam City Clerk, if we don't, if, unless we have other comments, we'll close public comment. All right, and we will, we will proceed with our uh, ceremonial duties here. Um, lucky for all of you, I get, you get to sit through a few uh, closing comments from your outgoing mayor. Um, I, I really appreciate this opportunity. It's, um, it, it makes me sad that we're not sitting in City Hall together because this is usually a really festive 
high energy night where the holidays feel like they're upon us. There's, there's flowers in the council chambers. We get ready for a reception afterwards. We're going to miss that. But like so much in, in 2020, things are different this year. So here we are via Zoom. But I appreciate the opportunity to acknowledge all we've accomplished together as a city team not just this amazing city council, but the 200 staff members that, that really execute all this policy work we do and the amazing community that's come together. It's taken a lot of teamwork, a lot of grit to get through this year, uh, but we've solved a lot of problems along the way. And, um, and I'm really proud of what we've been able to accomplish. Uh, the city manager and I have joked, pivot is, is the word of the year. We've pivoted, we've, we've innovated, we have, learn to communicate in new ways via Zoom, these kind of virtual meetings, but they've actually provided additional community engagement. We've had um, additional town hall meetings virtual that we've hosted. We've upped our social media game and our communications even on next door, trying to get trusted information out to the community, but we've learned a lot along the way as well. Uh, you know, this year, more than even some other years, a lot of our decision making has been a little bit more visible because we've had to uh, experiment with trial and error to try to address the community challenges, even the way we've managed our right of way, right? We've tried to expand our public roads to meet the needs of the community, whether it's been social distancing, greater social distancing, or allowing commerce to expand when it couldn't happen indoors. And I really want to give a huge shout out and a huge thanks to our Vice Mayor Ann O'Brien and our Council Member Ricardo Ortiz, who worked so hard with our city staff and our business community to address the needs of the business community on the Economic Development Subcommittee this year. Uh, we had to experiment, we changed course, we did parklets, we closed streets, we opened streets. It was um, all trying to serve the best needs of the community. And I think we, we learned a lot along the way also huge thanks to council member Michael Brownrigg and council member Donna Colson, who has liaisons to the Chamber of Commerce, worked and created an incredible, incredibly creative business aid and support package to help keep jobs alive in Burlingame and small businesses alive and even find a creative way for, uh, for individuals to help spend dollars locally. So uh, it's from all of you, all four of you, your hard work that's kept jobs and small businesses going through this difficult time. And we thank you for your creativity and work. Staff did an amazing job delivering our quality city services in new and in, in different ways, whether it's our library coming up with curbside pickup and making sure our collection was accessible. And boy, that parks and recreation staff figuring out new ways to, to keep people's morale up, whether it was through uh, programming, creative programming, using our outdoor spaces in new ways, after school programming, socially distant sports, a Halloween drive-by parade brought more smiles to this community and it wasn't just the kids. Uh, outdoor movies, outdoor concerts, uh, it, it, was, it was always something new and innovative and we appreciate their work as well. And then there's the, the behind the scenes work that happens in the city. A lot goes into running a city of 30,000 people to keep the sewer lines running, the water lines running, to keep the roads safe. And all of that had to be done including when we change policies like street openings and closures by our public works department, keeping, making sure all that logistics happened. But all of it had to happen in the context of a health crisis and additional cumbersome health protocols. Uh, and we appreciate our staff's hard work behind the scenes as well. And another behind the scenes thing that happened that wasn't out there and super obvious, but our amazing Central County Fire Department talk about mutual aid and how they came to the aid of other communities throughout California in what was a record breaking and not in a good way wildfire season, both here in San Mateo County and throughout the state. So to Chief Barron and his CCFD team, thank you for your, your courage and your selflessness to serve all around the state. Our community also stepped up in a huge way. Our commissions kept meeting virtually, doing all the things they do to vet our policy and, and make recommendations, hard decisions sometimes on behalf of city council. There was unprecedented volunteerism throughout the community and philanthropy, trying to address the needs, the most basic needs in our community. Many community members didn't have enough groceries, businesses struggling to stay alive. So whether it was called Primrose Food Pantry, which increased Burlingame residents alone over 260% this past year of Burlingame residents who needed grocery assistance 
or whether it was Meals for Mills volunteers or supportburlingame.com coming up with solutions. I was amazed by our union brothers and sisters out on Rollins Road supporting 16 grab and goes for people to come collect groceries and not just members of the union. Everybody was welcome. They had an army of volunteers out there serving over 52,000 people over the course of these last nine months or so. And there were cars lined up along Rollins Road, bending around Adrian every time there was a grab and go. This community really rallied to support one another. And there was amazing human kindness in our neighborhoods too. Neighbors looking out for neighbors, delivering meals, doing grocery runs. We're so grateful for our Burlingame Neighborhood Network and our CERT volunteers who created that infrastructure and our neighbors just caring for one another. It was really amazing to see that in action. You know, uh, Mike Nagler, our library trustee, talked about what an isolating year it was. And during such an isolating year where we were all in our bubbles, quite, quite literally at home, um, it's easy to forget what an incredibly diverse community we have here in Burlingame because we were just sort of self-absorbed in our own small universe. And the fact is we do have an incredibly diverse community in Burlingame. We have many different ages of people that live in Burlingame, different races, people who speak different languages, different socioeconomic status. We have great wealth in our community and we have many community members that fall below the federal poverty line. Every single resident suffered in different ways this year from isolation, forced to reinvent our lives but many also face devastating hardship. Illness, loss of jobs, businesses, uh, going under savings accounts, not enough money to pay for groceries, cramped living quarters where they're trying to do virtual living and uh, lack of childcare. But I'm really proud of the city council and the city for trying our best to address those immediate needs while also continuing to work on long-term community needs as well. Last year, when I took the gavel, could not have imagined that we would be where we are today. There were a couple of priorities I threw out there as things I thought we'd probably tackle this year, and one was affordability. Certainly, it took a little bit different form this year, but I feel very proud of our team for doing that. In terms of a COVID response, we really tried to step up to the plate, and the city council allocated over a million dollars divided between small business support in Burlingame to keep local jobs and businesses alive and split evenly among local residents who are struggling financially to pay for rent, groceries, and housing. So um, we did good work there. We also did it on a policy level, welcoming new housing into Burlingame, both market rate and affordable rate units, streamlining our ADU, our accessory dwelling unit policies to make sure ADUs are streamlined and can be built quickly to provide additional housing in a way that'll work for our Burlingame community. We also passed a $15 accelerated minimum wage to help our low wage workforce and our residents. Although COVID triage took center stage, we also moved the needle on important long-term projects and legislation to improve our community's quality of life. It's amazing how much we accomplished this year. And yes, it's a visionary council, but it's the incredible work of our staff, tenacious and talented, led by city manager, Lisa Goldman. We got our bike ped master plan passed just last week. It'll make walking, biking, and rolling through Burlingame, getting out of our automobile safer and more accessible. And our staff also landed a $1.4 million grant from the County Transportation Authority to try to make some of those visions into a reality. And so we can get to work on that right away. Our El Camino Real renewal project is continuing to move forward in a constructive way in partnership with Caltrans. This year, there was a tremendous amount of community outreach that Caltrans did with a live meeting in January, a huge live meeting at our uh, Burlingame Recreation Center and virtual meetings throughout the year. Over 300 comments, oh, almost 300 comments have been logged by Caltrans. So they're helping to shape the future planning and this council also stepped up by doing our part with some creative negotiations led by our city manager, Lisa Goldman, to triple, triple the amount of PG&E undergrounding credits that we have in our piggy bank here in Burlingame for pennies on the dollar. So that when the time comes, 
We can underground those utility lines on El Camino Real and make sure that we have a beautiful, safe, historic Grand Boulevard on El Camino Real with a beautiful, tall tree canopy. That'll be a terrific gift for generations to come. We approved a park's master plan in January that was years in the making. We opened a new Skyline Natural Park where, where dogs can run off leash. We passed electric building reach codes, short-term rental regulations, made a lot of progress on our Rollins Road specific plan where we can envision what that new neighborhood will look like in the city of Burlingame, created legs beneath our vision for a town square downtown, positioned our city for grants for future sea level rise improvements, and positioned our city for grants for our future Broadway grade separation. And the amount of work that went into laying that groundwork when federal funds start to open up in a meaningful way for infrastructure here in California, hopefully in the year ahead, we'll be ready, we'll be ready to run with that project as well. And finally, perhaps I think one of the most important things that happened this year, in addition to all the response to COVID, was we really did make meaningful progress on expanding the work to, to further racial justice and combat bias in our community, not just in our policing policies, which I'm so grateful that our chief of police uh, presented tonight, but even more importantly in the hearts and minds of the community. So thanks to the work of our, of our police department, but also our equity teams on staff and our wonderful community, Burlingame United Against Hate Committee. I'm confident we'll keep prioritizing this, both internally as a city and externally as a community in the, in the months and years ahead. I've always felt incredibly privileged to live in Burlingame and to serve on this city council with such strong, smart colleagues and incredibly talented staff. It's been my honor to serve as your mayor during a very, very challenging year. I do wanna thank my family for all their patience. I'm sure every council member up here and staff member up here thanks their family as well for the support uh, that we needed to get through this year. We couldn't do it without our families. Proud to say that our community is strong and resilient and united in our support for one another. And I'm really confident that some of, the, some of the bright spots of 2020, that spirit of innovation and collaboration and compassion will carry through in 2021. And so now it is my great honor to get ready to pass the mayor's gavel tonight to my colleague, Ann O'Brien Keegren. Uh, she is absolutely no stranger to this post. She served as our mayor three times before, and in our 112-year city history, there have only been seven people who have served as mayor four times, and congratulations, Anne, for being one of them. Anne is experienced. She's incredibly hardworking. She is always prepared. She cares so deeply and passionately about Burlingame. She's navigated many, many hard times before on city council, made tough decisions, helped lead us through prior recessions where we've come out stronger. She understands the needs of small business owners. We've talked about her work on the Economic Development Subcommittee. She also represents Burlingame on the County's Emergency Services Council. So she's got a front row seat to how emergency response is coordinated throughout the County of San Mateo. And in her day job, she works for the County of San Mateo. So she is deeply dialed in to our COVID response and the health department, and she can bring that expertise to our city, particularly as mayor next year. And I wanna personally thank you and on behalf of the entire city council for your long, very distinguished service to the city of Burlingame. I know you're the right mayor for our city as we move now from triage mode into recovery operations post COVID. We wish you all the very best this year and all four of us are here to support you every step of the way. So with that, it's my duty now to explain our city council uh, resolution that determines how we here in Burlingame select our mayor and our vice mayor. It's very civilized. We, we have a rotation process. In 1999, the city council adopted a formal rotation procedure for mayor of the city. And it ensures that each council member will become mayor in a routine pre-established order. So tonight, 
Pursuant to that procedure, it's my pleasure to turn the office of mayor and presiding officer of this council over to Anne O'Brien Keegren for the coming 12 months. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce our next mayor, Anne O'Brien Keegren and vice mayor, Ricardo Ortiz. And this is where I can hear the whole crowd going, ah, clapping, ah. And uh, thank you, I'll turn it over to Anne. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor, um, Mayor Beach. Uh, you have been definitely committed and dedicated uh, to the city this past year. It's been, it's been a rough year. Uh, but you were able to lead your colleagues. And I think uh, as a whole, we accomplished quite a bit this year. Uh, it has definitely been a year with so many unforeseen challenges. Uh, throughout this year, we have shared victories and we've shared heartbreaks. We have learned, we have grown, and we now share the collective understanding that Berlin Game is made up of incredible people and that we can overcome any crisis that comes our way. To all our employees who've had to pivot, as Mayor Beach mentioned earlier, to balance work and home life in the same environment. The balance of kids thrown into a world of remote learning and parents also working from home has been a monumental challenge. To our hospital, our first responders and essential workers, you have done such an amazing job in the face of danger to protect the city from a pandemic that has been elusive and deadly, but which we will clearly and de decisively defeat uh, in the next year. To all those who have been in one way or another contributed to the ongoing response, especially for those who need us the most in these times of uncertainty, you all represent what is good in government. To Lisa Goldman, our city manager and her team, who have established outstanding leadership that has been exhibited during these unprecedented times. All cities must strike a balance between protecting health and minimizing economic and social disruption. Cities must take a whole of government, a whole of society approach built around a comprehensive strategy to prevent uh, infections and save lives and minimize impact. It is my privilege as a now fourth time mayor to work with each of the members of the city council to find solutions to often complex challenges. It is imperative we work collaboratively with each other. Let's not forget what is happening in our own backyard. There is a unity of purpose that is transcendent in all our deliberations and mutual respect for each other and for our commitment to our fellow citizens. It has been a year of transformation and a year of agility. This future year will hopefully be a year of recovery. My intent is to focus on goals that were set last year and progress forward to make sure they are advanced. Much of the hard work is due to the dedication and the commitment of our city employees. They work timelessly every day on our behalf and we are immensely grateful for their service ethic and their creativity that they exhibit every day. We are facing some challenges that are, that are unprecedented in our city's history. The COVID-19 pandemic is still not over. COVID has severely impacted our economy and small business community, which is the engine that powers our prosperity. Businesses throughout Burlingame have taken a hit but that hit has been particularly deadly for businesses on the brink of closing, for those operating week to week, and for those who have been denied federal and state lending to sustain operations. Relief is needed for our business owners, our hospitality sector, and many others to get our residents back to work and our economy back on its feet. We were quite fortunate to have council members Brownwig and council member Colson work on programs to assist Burlingame small business community. We as a council approved funding of 500,000 for a small business grant program for our local merchants. In addition, the money was used for new restarting business assistance program, which was a reimbursement program to help businesses recoup money they spent on PPP and other improvements they implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
The council also approved paying the fiscal year 2020-2021 fees for our downtown business improvement districts. In addition, the subcommittee developed a Kickstart Burlingame program in which Burlingame Cares debit cards serve the purpose of helping those both businesses and low-income families and individuals. In addition, the council approved funding to Samaritan House, Call Primrose, and Hip Housing. The Economic Development Subcommittee, consisting of Vice Mayor Ortiz and myself, in addition to the staff member, Joseph Sanfilippo, worked together with the merchants to develop policy and rules in regard to closing and eventually reopening Burlingame Avenue and Broadway for outdoor dining. Granted, this has been a continual pivoting act as restrictions have changed at the state level multiple times. The city purchased parklets in order for businesses to conduct their work outdoors. The economic development team recommended free Saturday parking during the holidays to help encourage residents to shop local. In addition to the hit on small businesses, the hotel industry has also been hit hard during this pandemic. In response to the pandemic, the hotel fees were lowered by 5% for the 2020 year and then levying assessments at different rates each quarter in 2021. This moment, perhaps more than ever before, calls for unity and acknowledgement of a common purpose and we are united by a common need to stand together against a deadly virus, one that can be overcome by working to protect and care for one another. We are united in the struggle to rebuild and rebound the economy to make sure that no business is left out of the recovery process. Today, we can turn the page to a new chapter and lift our city back up through this crisis. It is time to focus on economic recovery. I see a future filled with improvement. Our community center construction project, our affordable housing project, otherwise known as our village Burlingame and the new downtown garage, the post office redevelopment project and top golf. The council will continue to develop a funding strategy for a Broadway grade separation. In addition, there will be a focus on infrastructure improvements to protect the Burlingame Bayfront from high susceptibility to flooding. Recently, as Mayor Beach mentioned, the council has taken steps to obtain funding for the underground of utilities on El Camino. We need to push forward and working with Caltrans on the rehabilitation of El Camino Real. Thank you, Council Member Brownrigg and Mayor Beach for the continual work on this renewal project. Council Member Colson and myself will continue to work on the Rollins Road specific plan process with the community. A virtual meeting was held in October to discuss how we intend to rec recreate the North Rollins Road area. There will be additional public outreach this coming year. Luckily, we are moving forward with the new post office redevelopment project with Saris Regis as our new post office developer. They are proposing a six story office project with ground floor retail and two levels of underground parking. We are working with Urban Field Studio to develop a conceptual design for a public plaza. This can be potentially a legendary project. It is important we as a council focus on these projects during the upcoming year and also continually reevaluate our financial status in addition to continually evaluating the status of our businesses. Burlingame still reflects local government in its strongest form. We are adapting alongside the rest of the world. Everything has changed, whether it is working from home, watching your kid's soccer game, getting a haircut, graduation, and delivery of speeches to empty rooms and then viewing them later. But Burlingame has risen to the occasion to meet the greatest world challenge in generations with characteristic resilience and resolve. COVID-19 has fundamentally altered our lives and livelihoods. The virus does not discriminate. There's always an inherent tension between planning for the future and meeting immediate needs. Every city, every business, and every family strives to be in a place where they can plan for the worst while hoping for the best. We, as a council, have struggled at times, occasionally faltered, but acted boldly, decisively, 
and selflessly in a time of great uncertainty. We will be stronger as an organization as we enter a new beginning in 2021. So I thank you all and have a safe and wonderful holiday. So on that note, we have hit adjournment. And uh, so I just want to uh, wish everyone a wonderful holiday and a safe holiday. And we will adjourn for this evening and our next meeting will be on the 4th of January. So thank, you, thank, you Madam Mayor. thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you guys. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.